Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little. I'm back with the second part of the fifth week of WeeklyPokerHand.com where I go over a hand that I saw take place and I critique the play. Right here with Ace-Queen, this is our villain. In the previous hand, we were sitting here in the uh, Skios spot. Right here, we're heads up at a final table of a tournament and we min-raise with Ace-Queen suited. And I think this is perfectly fine and very standard. Our opponent checks, and we go ahead and continuation bet the flop. I like this bet sizing a lot, because if our opponent has any piece of this flop, or even maybe maybe a hand like a gut shot, he's going to continue. And that's exactly what you want to happen when you have ace-queen on queen 4-3. Um, if the board was... Actually, I mean, I'm trying to think if there's any way I would bet any at any different size right here, and I think I'm just betting 10,000 with pretty much my whole range here, and this just happens to be right near the top of it, so I like this play a lot. And our opponent calls. When our opponent calls, we can generally put his range on being one of those pairs, a 5 or a 4, um, a gut shot type hand, like 7-5, or maybe a queen or something like that. Maybe pocket 2s, but that's fine, kind of unlikely. Also, you could have something like ace-5, ace-2, something like that. A lot of players would check raise those hands as bluffs, but I believe this is from like a small to mid-stakes tournament, so you can't really expect your opponents to play too well. On the turn, our opponent checks again, and we like to bet 23,000. I think this is a great card to go ahead and barrel on. It, whenever a 4 comes on the turn, it's pretty unlikely our opponent has a 4. So that sort of narrows his range to being a few combinations of a 4, something like 5, 6, 7, 5, a queen, or a 3. We beat a lot of that range. So, we get called. The river's a 7, and our opponent donks into us. This is called a donk bet, because again, as I said in the last episode, it's going to force your opponents to play fairly straightforward. And when our opponent donks here, I think his range is either very, very strong or very, very weak. So now, with ace-queen, we really have a bluff catcher. I don't think too many people are going to donk-shove the turn with, or the river with queen-jack on a queen-3-4-4-7 four, four, board. It's uh, pretty unlikely. So... This is a tough spot. I mean, I know a lot of players just instantly click call here and don't think twice about it. But it's really close. And if you are if you know for a fact your opponent is incapable of donking the river without a very premium hand, I think this is a pretty easy muck, even heads up. However, at this stake, we probably don't know that much about our opponent. And honestly, you should probably just look him up because he could be spazzing out with something like pocket sixes. Um, but really, it's, it's tough to actually find a hand that he may be bluffing with. Maybe 7-5 he decides to just bet it. It's a, it's a pretty gross spot for the ace-queen here. And I think you're going to end up getting shown a poorly played 4 or exactly 5-6 a lot of the time. So, the villain in this hand, GT, does call, gets shown the 5-4 and loses a nice pot. So if you guys have any questions about this, hand history review, or if you would like me to review some of your hands, please feel free to send them in. This has been Jonathan Little for WeeklyPokerHand.com. Thanks for watching.